What's going on guys and welcome to my first official tier list and we're starting off with the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise. So I've been asked for quite a while, a couple of years now to start doing some of these tier lists. I've been kind of resisting it because I don't personally watch them, but you, enough of you guys have asked me, I decided, you know what, screw it, let's go ahead and do it. Maybe I'll have more fun doing it than I realize and I will do more. So since I kicked off my very first movie review series on this channel back in 2016 with the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise, felt appropriate to do the first tier list here. So we've got five categories from best to worst, which is dreamy, good, watchable, snooze fest, and absolute nightmare. Really quick before we get started, anybody that's never watched one of these tiered list videos, it's essentially like a ranking video, but instead of ordering them from worst to best, I'm just placing them in categories and giving my reasons for that. So starting off with the original, the OG, the one that started it all back in 1984, the original Nightmare on Elm Street. And we don't even have to beat around the bush with this one. This one's going right into the dreamy category. This is one of the greatest horror films ever made. Most people would say it's the best of this franchise. Uh, I only tend to hear two movies kind of debated as far as what is the best in this franchise, but Nightmare on Elm Street was a great original idea by Wes Craven. You have a, an awesome horror icon that was birthed here in Freddy Krueger, who's obviously always been my favorite alongside Chucky. You have great practical effects. I mean, just the behind the scenes work on how they did some of the special effects and the stunts and everything regarding Tina's death and the rotating room and then doubled that thing again for Johnny Depp's little tornado of blood death. This is one of the greatest horror films of all time. Not really anything else I can add to that conversation other than saying, yes, it's absolutely going in the dreamy category. Next, we got Nightmare on Elm Street Part 2, Freddy's Revenge. And this is one that's often debated amongst fans. There is some really passionate fans that think that this is one of the best, if not the best versions of Freddy Krueger. You have other people that despise the direction that this movie went to. And uh, it has a legacy all on its own because of all of the behind the scenes subtext in the writing and the and basically ending the career of the main star Mark Patton and there's a whole documentary called Screen Queen My Nightmare on Elm Street it's pretty interesting if you could check it out but for me personally I'm gonna put part two in the watchable category I don't think that it's terrible I used to. I don't think that it's terrible, but I don't think it's one of the best either. I think that the Freddy that we get here is awesome. Arguably the darkest Freddy that we get in the entire franchise. And there's certainly some fun to be had while you watch the movie and just kind of laugh at some of the crazy decisions that they decided to make and how the script was translated visually on screen that really, uh, it's no secret, it put a lot of gay subtext to the front and it was no longer subtext anymore. So it, it's a fun movie to watch, but at the same time, there's a lot of things in this thing that's just goofy as hell. And as a follow-up to the original Nightmare on Elm Street, I don't think it measures up. And now we are on to Dream Warriors. Now, those of you guys who have been following me for a long time, you already know this is my personal favorite in the franchise, so obviously this is going right up there with Dreamy. Now, uh, it's a very hard debate between this and the original film, but I've always loved Dream Warriors just a little tiny bit more, like a razor-thin edge, just because I love the style of it. I love the soundtrack, I love the characters, I love the Dream Warriors' powers, the way that they're realized on screen. I think this is the perfect mix of Scary Dark Freddy and Funny Freddy. This is the only movie to get it perfect. Freddy vs. Jason came close, but this is the only movie to get it perfect because the humor was still dark and the humor was still disturbing. And so I just love this. It's an endlessly rewatchable movie for me. I think that the cast of characters as far as the victims, the actual dream warriors here, is probably the best cast of characters in the entire franchise. I know it's a tall order with the first film, but I like every single one of them, no matter how much or how little they are developed. And I just love the style of this. Some of the best kills in the franchise, some easily the best one-liners in the franchise, no question. So I'm a Dream Warriors whore. It's going right up there next to the first one. And now we are at A Nightmare on Elm Street Part 4, Dream Master. Now, as a kid, this one was my favorite. There was something about the MTV style that this had, the soundtrack, the colors, the, the goofiness. You know, I'm not quite as dark and brutal of a sense of humor as the third film. But as I've gotten older, it has gone quite a few ranks down in my ranking and it's not my favorite anymore. Uh, I would still put it in the watchable category though. I think that it is a fun entry. 
I think that even though I don't like the direction that this film starts to take the humor of Freddy Krueger, there is still some good one-liners here. I love the opening of the movie. Hate the fact that the Dream Warriors get killed off in the first 15 minutes, but I do love the way that Freddy comes back. Uh, and I do like Alice as a character as well. I've never been one of those people that thinks that she's a better uh, Freddy final girl or a better character than Nancy, not even close, but I do like her as a character that kind of ties part four and five together. Uh, I would not be opposed whatsoever if they ever did like a legacy sequel and decided to go back and bring that character back. Uh, and so all the way throughout this, this is a movie that I can have a lot of fun with. I have a lot of nostalgia for it. It's nowhere near as good as the two that I have in the dreamy category, but it's still a very watchable movie despite all of its flaws. Ugh, now we're dipping down into some of that bullshit. So we got A Nightmare on Elm Street Part 5, The Dream Child. I have never liked this movie. Even as a kid, I've never liked this. There, there was aspects to it that was somewhat appealing. Like I thought the comic book kill was cool as a kid, as an adult, not so much. The only thing that I genuinely love about this movie as an adult is that the first kill in the film the, the way that they take out Dan in that little motorcycle by turning him into that like motorcycle demon, that is awesome. And if you find the footage of like the more uh, unrated cut of this, the one that the, they had to take a lot of the violence out to meet the MPAA standards, it's an even better kill. Like I genuinely think, despite the fact that I do not like this movie at all, that kill is one of the best of the entire franchise, easily top five. And so, with that being said, this is going into Snooze Fest, because I don't think it's an absolute nightmare, but it is certainly not a movie that... Uh, I just don't ever have the desire to watch this. Even if I'm doing a binge session, I get through four and I'm like, oh, do I have to continue? It's just goofy as hell. The way that they take Freddy, is, this is the beginning of like cartoon character Freddy. This is where none of the one-liners really land. They're just all these slapstick, like, dad jokes, almost. I don't like any of the kills aside from the motorcycle. The whole storyline with the dream child is just very odd. Essentially, they had what the situation was in part four to where Rennie Harlan had an incomplete script, and he just formulated these nightmare sequences and kind of pieced the movie together throughout the shooting schedule. And for what he had to work with, he did a pretty damn good job. They tried to do that exact same thing again in part five, and I think they completely fall on their face with it. Again, no script, we're just gonna piece it together. Well, you piece together a piece of shit, because I've never liked this film. So snooze fest, absolutely, with Nightmare on Elm Street part five. Oh my God, and now we are at Freddy's Dead. Not even gonna waste any time. This movie is an absolute fucking nightmare. This is the movie that I despise the most. Is it the worst movie ever made? Absolutely not, there's worse movies, but this is the movie that offends me the most. As a, Fre as a Freddy fan, as a Nightmare on Elm Street fan, this is the movie that pisses me off, the fact that it exists. This is what absolutely destroyed the character and the franchise for a period of time. This is the lowest of the lowest of the low. Like even when I ranked all of the big three franchises, Nightmare on Elm Street, Halloween, and Friday the 13th, and there is a lot of shit bombs throughout those three franchises, this was still easily the worst of all of them. It's basically a Looney Tunes cartoon starring Freddy. And I understand some people that can like that, that can kind of take this movie on its own merit and can enjoy it for the, the goofy train wreck that it is. I'm just not somebody that can. I, I just love this franchise and this character so much that I can never detach my emotions and just watch this for what it is and have a stupid time with it. It just makes me mad. The characters are terrible. The kills are goofy and terrible. There's a fucking Power Glove reference. The, the way that they decide to end the movie because they forced it into being this 3D thing back in the, the, the late 80s, early 90s when they were trying to do that thing again with 3D movies. And it's just these horrible early CGI little dream fish uh, I've talked about this movie enough. Like, I've reviewed it, I've ranted on it more times than I ever want to talk about. I hope I never have to watch this movie again. Honestly, that, that's how much I hate it. I hope that there is never a reason for me to ever suffer through this thing again. And now we're at Wes Craven's New Nightmare. And this is another movie that's debated a little bit. It tends to be on the higher end of the debate, but many people put this as top tier, Nightmare on Elm Street, one of the best, maybe even their favorites. There's others that are fond of it that just don't really have it as their favorite. I've never met anybody that dislikes this movie. For me personally, it's going in the good category. I really do like this film. I think that it was ahead of its time. It's obviously like a precursor for Scream. That was Wes Craven getting out some of that meta storytelling out to kind of test the waters before he eventually nailed it with 1996's Scream. 
But for me, despite the fact that it's a really good script, it's a very smart story, I love the fact that Wes Craven finally came back to this franchise to get it back on track. It's got one of the best Freddy's, certainly one of the best Freddy designs, and Heather Langenkamp is awesome playing herself in this. And I do like the element that her son brings uh, as well. But despite all that, when I'm in the mood for a Nightmare on Elm Street film, I very rarely pick this film up. I don't know why. I, I really like it. I really do. But I'm just never really in the mood to watch it. When I'm in the mood for a Freddy film, I want to watch a Freddy film, not uh, the Hollywood meta version of this demon that takes the personification of Freddy. And part of that's probably because Freddy's very minuscule in this movie. Some would say that that's to the movie's credit. Uh, that they kind of hold him back until the third act, and there's really only two kills in this movie, both of which are kind of derivative. You know, you have the kill of the husband that's somewhat derivative of the Dan kill in part five. Then you get the kill of Julie in the hospital, which is very obviously made to be kind of a uh, homage to Tina's death in the first film. So the two major deaths we get in this is kind of like been there, done that. But on a story level, this is absolutely top tier. It is just a movie that, for whatever reason, doesn't have the rewatch value of the ones above it. And now we're at Freddy vs. Jason, and this is another movie that's hotly debated amongst Nightmare and Friday the 13th fans. I was 13 years old when this movie came out. I remember for almost a decade my dad telling me that there's going to be a Freddy vs. Jason movie, and ever since they had that scene in Jason Goes to Hell, everybody was waiting, just waiting on the edge of their seat. When's this thing going to come out? And I remember I was in seventh grade, and I was on the computer in like computer lab or something and I just for whatever reason just decided to type in freddyvsjason.com back when movies would have websites when they were coming out and there was actually a website and there was a trailer and there were screenshots and I was like oh my god it's real it's happening and uh, this might be the movie that I have anticipated the most in my entire life. Like, I, as much as I'll get excited about uh, the Batman or something like that to where I'm just on the edge of my seat waiting for it, 13-year-old me was like counting the seconds until I could see this film. And when I finally did see it, I loved it. I think it's awesome. I, I really do. I'm going to have it in the good category. And I understand some people's issues with it, especially if you're a Jason fan. I understand that the disappointment that Kane Hodder didn't reprise his role. I don't think Ken Kersinger is terrible as Jason, but I get the disappointment there. Uh, I understand some of the criticisms hailed at it. I, I think you could pretty much hail them at most of the entries in any of these franchises. I mean, you're just getting into the common flaws of slasher films at that point. But when this movie is on when it's actually doing what the, the title promises, I think it's an absolute blast. I, I think the kills are great. I think that Robert Englund did a, a fantastic job as kind of like his swan song for the character. Uh, I think that the Jason that we get here is an effective Jason. You know, I'm not overly passionate about Jason, so I can take Ken Kersinger's performance a lot better than some of you diehards can. Uh, the characters, as far as the teenagers, they're fine. I don't think any of them are really all that offensive. I, I really don't. I think the humor is pretty good here. Uh, it's the second best Funny Freddy after Dream Warriors, for sure. And the way that they decided to kind of realize the actual fights with making Freddy be a little bit more hand-to-hand, -hand, having Jason have the, the revenge angle and everything, I think it's the best version of this movie we could have ever asked for, honestly. I mean, when you think about how bad this could have been, I think the movie that we actually got is pretty damn good. And now we are at the final entry, which is the 2010 remake. And for me, this one is going to be going into... Snooze Fest. I debated Unwatchable, I'll be honest with you, because I don't think that this remake is as terrible as some people make it out to be. It, it tends to be with remakes, everybody just acts like there's one rating you can give all remakes and that's absolute garbage. If it's not John Carpenter's The Thing level, it's garbage. There's nothing in between. And I just think that's ridiculous. Now I tend to be more forgiving and more favorable on remakes than most people, but even with that being said, there is a lot of mistakes in this movie. I will say that Jackie Earl Haley's version of Freddy Krueger is a lot better than he gets credit for. I think for the amount of bullshit that they gave him to deal with with this script, I think he did his absolute best with it. And if he had a better movie, I think everybody would have accepted his version of Freddy very easily. I think he had a, a good approach with the voice and the mannerisms. I like that little scissor thing that he does with the gloves. And, and so, I think he was a great pick for Freddy Krueger back when this came out. Even when I saw Watchmen, I was like, that dude would be a great Freddy. Unfortunately though, the script is just absolute garbage. It's just absolute trash. I mean, this is a movie that tries to redo scenes from 1984 
and just butchers them. I mean, even the simple effect of Freddy coming out of the wall that they did with like some cheap ass spandex probably cost them like 20 bucks. You have decades later and they make it look like absolute garbage with CGI. There's other sequences in this. It's just taken right at, I mean, even Tina's death. It's like, guys, you're not going to make that anywhere near as impressive or cooler or visually satisfying as they did in 1984 because it was just so mind blowing they were able to do that back then. So do something different. The cast in this movie, I mean, aside from Jackie Earl Haley, misfire all the way around. Rooney Mara is a fantastic actress. She gave zero fucks in this movie. And I'm insulted as a Nightmare on Elm Street fan that they allowed her to just stay on set. I mean, she's, she's gone on record saying she hated making this movie. I'm just wondering why the fuck you even signed up for it. Why did you audition for it? Why did you take the paycheck then? Because she just is asleep, no pun intended, this entire movie. Every single one of the other side characters, absolutely expendable. They, they get names that are like Easter eggs for the rest of the franchise, but there's just no development of them. We don't care about a single one of them. And then you had this whole thing, which was just a gigantic mistake. I, I respect the fact that they wanted to try to do something different, but they had this angle about is Freddy innocent or is he actually a killer? You know, was he a child molester or was these kids just saying things and the parents jumped to conclusions and, and burned an innocent man. There's an interesting dynamic to that, but by the end of the movie when they just say, oh, no, never mind, he, he's just a straight up fucking evil guy. You know, he, he, was, he wasn't innocent at all. Kind of destroys the whole point of that. <laughs> it's like, revelation, Freddy's evil. No shit, we've known that since 1984. And then you have the whole thing that they decided to focus much more on the child molestation side of Freddy than the child murderer side of Freddy. Like the, the sexual version of Freddy was always just kind of hinted at and subtext and you know it was visualized with like the way he did his tongue like, and shit like that. It was never like this forefront of the story and there's a reason for that, okay? Like as weird as it is, you can have a child murderer and he's such a badass character that we all love that you still just, you love the character, you, you love the horror icon sense of Freddy Krueger. When he's a villain because he's fucking kids, you can't get behind that. <laughs> like you can't, you, you can't like root for your killer in any way. And I know it's such a weird argument to make, but it's absolutely true. We all know it's true. There's reasons why we love Michael and Jason and Freddy and Ghostface and all that, even though they're evil and they're the bad guy. So that was just a gigantic misfire. Uh, that it's a movie that. For all of the Platinum Dunes remakes that we got that I genuinely think are great, this was the biggest disappointment of all of them, and it had the potential to be a fantastic remake. I mean, I mean a modern version of Freddy Krueger with all of the tools that you have at your disposal. No excuse whatsoever why this movie ended up being such a, a, a mess an absolute mess. All right, guys, that's it for my first tier list. If you enjoyed this, please click over here for all of my Nightmare on Elm Street reviews. And I'm also going to put my ranking of every single one of the kills in this franchise, my slay list. So please check that out. Please like and share this video, hit that subscribe button. And as always, guys, remember, opinions are like assholes, but that doesn't mean that you have to be.